Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the October 31st, 2017 special meeting of the Glenda City Council. May we have a roll call, please? Council members Agajanian. Present. Devine. Here. Najarian. Here. Sananian. Here. Mayor Garpedian. Here. May I please have your report? The agenda for the October 31st, 2017 special public meeting of the City Council was posted on Monday, October 30th, 2017, on the Bolton Board outside City Hall. There are three items, actually four items before you today. The first item is Director of Community Development regarding downtown holiday trolley service route designation. 1A is motion directing staff on preferred route to the downtown holiday trolley service. Mr. Mayor, this is simply an opportunity uh, that uh, staff is requesting to reconsider that uh, route that was approved previously uh, so that we can ensure that uh, the folks on the trolley are on for a minimal amount of time, um, which means just keeping the, the route north and south on brand as opposed to going the loop out to central where uh, conflicts with B-Line and possible uh, construction activity would delay and slow down the headways. And so with uh, council approval, we would uh, ask as we begin to roll out this project and advertise for it, uh, ask that you uh, give us the revised direction on uh, this preferred route sticking solely on the Brand Boulevard uh, route for the, the holiday trolley. Okay. Uh, any comments? Um, I, I just have one comment, if I may. Um, this seems to be a more efficient route, and uh, it's time sensitive. So um, I think it's a good uh, a good decision. I, and I want to stress to everybody that's watching out there: there was an article in the news press uh, that mentioned that the cost of the trolley was going to be like ten dollars one way. This trolley is going to be free. There is no cost. And uh, I'm awaiting uh, a retraction or a, a, a different uh, correction. Uh, correction in the news press. So um, I, I want everybody out there to know that. It's going to be a lot of fun. And um, uh, we'll, hopefully we'll have a Santa on board and uh, maybe, a, uh, you know, it's, it's just going to be an, a fun fun trolley for the holidays. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Again, sorry. Again. I have to say free to the, those who will ride on it. But it didn't say that way. It says it will cost $9.20 to the city, up to over $18 per travel. So the city will bear the cost of somebody who wants to come, doesn't want to take the B line, and will use this service. And the uh, city will pay for that person. And total cost to the city is $143,000. And to that, we have to add also that they would ride on B-Line now for two months, which will this will run, uh, I don't know, it's $2.50 or $3, whatever the ride is from, if they would use the B-Line, they're not gonna pay that. During the two months, it will be approximately $18,000 that B-Line will lose. So total cost will be 161,000 in my opinion for just, uh, few people who will use this service. Northwest will not gonna benefit from this. Adam, Adams Hill will not gonna benefit. Nowhere else they gonna benefit, just the two big businesses in Glendale where this bus uh, will drive or bring the passengers here and we will save uh, in an hour 6.4 riders we gonna have and possibly four less car will come to downtown, but instead this big bus will come to downtown. So I don't see any benefit and still, I think this is too much. Thank you. Mr. Nigerian has comments. Any more comments? Well, we voted on this already and in the spirit of giving, <laughs> I think the city wanted to make sure that we put aside the strict calculation of the fiscal impact and give the residents and shoppers and children, young children, during the holiday season, some fun in their lives. It won't cost them anything to ride up and down wonderful Brand Boulevard, which will be decorated with the holiday festivities thanks to the uh, Downtown Glendale Association, and go to their favorite uh, shopping malls to visit Santa, and visit everything in between from Mountain Street all the way down to, to Colorado. So you can't always look at everything on a, a dollar and cents basis. I don't, I don't dispute any of the dollar figures that Mr. Egejanian put forward. But sometimes you have to look at it 
uh, in the spirit of a holiday season. Just a quick, quick question for staff. Mr. Uh, Ochoa, I think last time we touched upon this, how much does the Beeline bus ride cost us per passenger? Oh, sir, I'd have to defer to Mr. Lanzafame. Uh, it is a dollar um, and two, uh, I understand the, the logic behind it uh, and, and uh, Mr. Igajanian did say his opinion. Um, what staff is, is looking at, our estimate is that most of the people that are using the Beeline one and two are taking it from northwest or the north part of town all the way to the transportation center. So we don't anticipate that we'll lose riders from Beeline to ride the shuttle. Rather, it will be shoppers that park in one place and want to shop up and down Brand Boulevard or that are in the office buildings and using that shuttle. Uh, but again, certainly the numbers uh, that he gave were the numbers reflected last week. Right, and, and I absolutely uh, yeah, agree with uh, Councilmember Agajani, and those numbers are, are what they are. And it is going to cost the city that much money per, per ride, rider, but um, we are trying to add some cheer and some fun to downtown Glendale and see how popular this uh, trolley will be and add some cheer um, and increase business for um, the, the business uh, district in the city of Glendale. So. There it is. Okay. Is there a motion? I'm, I move the item. With the brand route. Uh, With the brand, the, yes, call. yes. I'll Circling say. brand. 1 8. Okay. Roll call, please. Council members Agajanian? No. Devine? Yes. Najarian? Yes. Sananian? Yes. Mayor Garpedian? Yes. What's the next item, please? Item two is police chief uh, request uh, for authorization to enter into a professional <coughs> services agreement, PSA, for medical services for police department arrestees <coughs> and inmates. Uh, 2A is a motion authorizing to execute a PSA with Vital Medical Services LLC over a 32-month period with total expenditures not to exceed $850,000. So, Ocha? Yes, sir. Uh, I think it was three years ago, the city of Glendale Police Department and uh, the principals at Vital Medical came together to, uh, to uh, pioneer what actually is a very innovative uh, program. Uh, previous to this partnership, uh, when there was a need for a blood draw, when there was a need for um, some medical clearance, uh, officers would have to leave the field and escort uh, the arrestee to local hospitals to provide that service, be uh, encounter what we call wall time, literally standing against the wall, uh, waiting to be uh, seen at the various hospitals. Uh, the niche that was identified by the folks at Vital was that they would, instead of having you take the arrestee to the hospital, they would bring the medical services to the jail at the end of the day uh, to provide any number of services. What you have uh, during that three, two and a half to three year prove up period uh, that goes back to uh, actually about a little over three years uh, to 2014 uh, is this uh, notion of proof of concept and then ultimately the marketing of that concept around uh, through uh, the Los Angeles region and hopefully beyond. It's a better use of public safety services, which you know are the most expensive assets that we have uh, in our city resource toolbox. So uh, wanting to continue that, we are asking that we continue with Vital Medical for a 32-month period uh, set to expire June 30th uh, uh, in 20, 2018. No, geez, uh, in 2020. Am I right? My apologies. Um, we will go forward uh, at that time uh, and presumably do uh, some type of procurement process. However, it's worth noting that today Vital Medical is effectively uh, the only player in this space that provides this range of services uh, as, again, they have kind of pioneered this, uh, this level of service for public safety uh, in the Los Angeles region and probably uh, even beyond. Uh, I think Chief Castro, if you want to call him up, can speak to the range of services and also uh, can also speak to the uh, reception that uh, this degree of service uh, has had around the region. Um, certainly while he was uh, the chair of LA County Chiefs, uh, this is something along the lines of our TAC medicine program that show Glendale at the forefront of trying to save as much money as we can and keep resources on the street. So uh, with that, the agreement is for uh, $850,000 over the course of this 32-month 32, uh, 32 process or contract. And if you have specific questions, uh, Chief can answer those for you. Okay. Chief, if you give us a quick report. 
Yes, so several years ago, talking with the fire chief, what we found was that fire was making about 100 to 200 calls a year to the police department to help transport inmates who needed medical care to one of our local hospitals. Then we would have to have two officers at the hospital waiting behind everyone else in the busy ERs until we could get treatment for our, our inmate. We also saw a very clear pattern where individuals thought that if they complained about a medical ailment, we would release them from custody rather than spend the time, money, and energy to take them to a local hospital. We also had several incidents in our local ERs where the suspects would fight with our officers. We had a couple times where they got out of the ER and we had to chase them down. So I figured there had to be a better way. And talking about this, with the fire chief, we found this company, Vital Medical Services, and they were coming up with a new concept where they would bring you a medical facility in your jail. So we have a room in our jail that is set up like a little mini ER. They come and they spend, during our busy times, they're there at the station working constantly. During the other times, they're on call. So the officer makes the call from the field. They usually beat us to the station. They make the treatment. We have saved over 8,500 officer hours over these last three years. I mean, that, that's the amount of time that we're sitting on the street. That's a lot of additional personnel. Plus, we don't have the expense and we don't have the inconvenience to fire to bring these people uh, out of our jail and to our facility. They also do a whole range of services. They do the blood draws for drug and alcohol. They do taser dart removals. They do uh, booking clearances that are approved by the LA County Jail when the inmate gets moved over to the county facility. They also treat our employees. So if an employee has an exposure to blood or some other thing, we'd have to send them out to a clinic. Vital comes and does that for us, for our employee, in the privacy and the comfort of our police station. And we get that turnaround immediately. We're not, they're not waiting for days for results to come back. We also found that we have to do fit testing for our gas masks every year. They helped us do that. They are finding more and more ways uh, to help us and keep us more efficient and save us costs. The cost of what we pay them <coughs> is cheaper than what we've ever paid to any of the other local medical facilities. And we, again, we gain that time, but those officers aren't off the streets. They're continually working in the jail and we get the patrol officers back out into the field. When we do our DUI checkpoints, they actually come out to the checkpoint and they do the treatments and the draws right there in the field. So the officer doesn't have to go back to the station. They do it right there for us, which actually is a better evidence item for us because it captures truly what that uh, influence is, but yet drugs or alcohol at the time of the, the stop and or arrest. And other times we have to wait. Sometimes those things will dissipate and we don't get the result that we had and these individuals may be able to get away with something. So, the, just one question. The 8,500 officer hours translates into what dollar amount? That's probably going to be uh, probably around five officers, five additional full time officers that we would, you know, be so having. Dollar wise, there. what does it translate to? How many? burden is going to be oh. in excess of a million dollars in savings. Okay. Council Member Devine. Um, uh, you know, we've, I think we've probably all gotten emails from the, uh, our residents about uh, why we haven't issued an RFP for this. Is this the only company that does this? It is, and this is a PSA, which the charter allows for us to do this. We have looked, and you can look at all the cities that are now, Glendale was the first. We were the first ones. Mm. They gave us a really good deal for three years. They lost money doing what they did for us. All these other cities that are listed in the staff report now contract with Vital. The LA County Sheriff's Department is doing a trial to bring Vital Medical. So all these other cities have looked, we have looked, we can find some. There are companies that will do similar services, but not exact. They don't have the range of service levels that Vital has for us. So we could probably find someone that might come out and say, I, I can do a blood draw for you. But they won't be able to do the entire scope of medical services that we need for our employees, as well as we need for the inmates that are in our care. But it's probably worth, to your point, ma'am, to the extent that people cite the charter for our public works projects and other procurements, you would have to go out to, to bid for public or for uh, professional service agreements like this, especially one that is so unique to this niche. Um, it's not uh, required. In fact, I don't know, that, as the chief says, you would find somebody fulfill that scope. The other, um, the other question that was, um, was also posed was the fact that, uh, you know, why don't we let the hospitals bid for this? Um, but 
you're saying that, that the hospitals are more expensive. Correct. And also more time consuming Correct. and also a danger to probably the people that these um, arrestees would, you know, I mean, if they make problems in the, in the emergency room, it could be, uh, it could get pretty bad. Um, I have one other question, and, and this is about the, the price, the, uh, the rates. Um, I noticed that for the eight months, it's $204,000, which is, um, let's see, 25500 a month, I think, is, am I right? Is that? And then, uh, so for, and then for the next two years that we're asking, or, or that we're going to, that you're asking for, it's three twenty-two eighty per year. But when I do the math, that's a, a an uptick of over twenty thousand uh, dollars. So it's a difference. Like, if we were at the same amount, twenty-five per month. For two more years, it should be three hundred and six thousand dollars, but it's three hundred and twenty-two. Is there a each year they get a three percent, a potential three percent increase based on the CPI, and that's figured in. And this? That's figured in there. So oh. eight fifty is the maximum okay. amount. Okay. We don't expect that we'll get there, okay. but we also built in, like I said, for three years they have lost money on the city of Glendale, but they're here. They're in our city. Their offices are on brand. And in fairness to, to certainly the city and the department, this also was opportunity for proof of concept by vital, right? So yeah, as much as we love and respect the work that they do, um, you know, this was pioneered a private and a public player in order to develop this concept. Right. Okay, that's all I have. Thank Any you. Any more questions? Ms. Uh, Jenny. I don't have problem with this contract. I know the officers, uh, they're members, some of them, they're a member of Kiwanis Club where I attend. They're good people. I have a problem with uh, one of their uh, information videos that uh, Chief you were in it and Glendale Police Department with their name, officers were in it and also the videotape is showing the Police department facilities. I don't know if that's okay. I mean, yeah. police officers with badges. Certainly, I, I would have to defer to the chief and city attorney. I don't believe, if memory serves, that any of our officers were paid to be in the video. It's a testimonial gratis uh, that was used to help develop, again, this concept that GPD, alongside Vital, developed for our use and then also to try to put out to other police departments. So certainly I don't think there's any legal issue. I defer to, to city attorney as to whether or not there would be any ethical issue. Certainly if our folks were being paid to be in a video, I would think there'd be a problem, but I don't think that anyone was ever paid if I recollect. No, they were on duty. I didn't receive any compensation. We made that video along with the police chief of Redondo Beach to market to other LA County police chiefs agencies and through the state mm. to show the concept. And we also used it as a, a, a nomination for an award on cutting edge technology. I also wrote a paper for Cal Chiefs talking about this partnership because it is so unique to be able to do that and not have to hire full-time medical staff like the county jail does, for instance. So it's a marketing video for fellow chiefs to show what we're doing and give them an idea of how they could save money and also have the same conveniences that we have found using this company within our jail. Okay. Comments? I, I mean. okay, that's a little troubling to me too because the, I understand it's good for them to market this video and have LA, no I'm sorry, Glendale police officer, police, Glendale chief in the video. I just don't understand why we would do it, why would we, we'd be interested in it. We have our relationship that we have. They're getting paid. They're, you know, we're paying sure. them, and they provide a service. But why, why are we allowing ourselves to be used to encourage others to engage in financial transactions with? I mean, as a this private entity, mm -hmm. I would just, I would tell you that as a demonstration, um, and as a means of us actually applying for other recognitions, that they are going to do a, a promotional video. We've done other promotional. Uh, videos with other companies, certainly for um, some of our economic development programs. So for, I, for profit companies, we 
Sure. I mean, you look at Tech Week, um, we have done quite a bit with private companies up but to... that's for us, right? That's for us. It's, it's for our Tech Week. But, I, but it, those companies also use. utilize those materials. So are you asking, like, should we be paid for those? No. no? I'm, I'm saying... The city, I mean. We, the city shouldn't participate oh. in a commercial video, commercial that's being used by the commercial entity. So Tech Week, is, I don't think it's a good analogy because well, Tech Week, it's we're making it for us. So it's out mm -hmm. in the in sort of in the open in, in the in the ether. And if someone finds a way to make use of it for themselves, okay, it's fair game. But for us to be in their commercial is an entirely different matter. But it was done for an award. We went for consideration yeah. for an award to show what we're doing and what at that time you know. Redondo Beach was looking at doing also. So there was two different agencies. We submitted this uh, to show uh, the good work that we do. We do videos for our crime lab to highlight our technologies there. We've done videos highlighting our uh, work with the homeless and the mentally ill. So even though it may sometimes give an appearance that we're doing a marketing video for them, it was truly just to document and highlight what we're doing for award recognitions of the different things that we've been doing here in Glendale. And it's another example of the cutting edge things that fire and police are doing in partnership. And this is a great partnership with a private company so I don't have to go out and hire medical staff and make them city employees. Okay. So, so um, I approve uh, the item before us uh, using uh, this uh, company and its cutting edge, uh, I guess, uh, operational procedures with, with the city. But I would say that in the future, and you know, the video was done, in the future if there's any sort of uh, appearances that could be used for marketing by any of our department heads, that at least it come to the city manager uh, beforehand and get approval and uh, uh, just sure. just have some sort of, I mean, what's done is done, and, and I'm not saying what we did was wrong or not, but in the future, if there's a question like that, let's make sure at least it goes through the process sure. and, and maybe uh, we get the input of the city manager for approval on that. Okay. And how about the, the facilities? I mean, okay, you are not paid, the officer is in there, he's not paid, but they were using our facilities and our motorcycle or uh, police vehicle, how that happens inside the police department is videotaped in there, videotaped in there. Well, showing the facilities that they have invested into our jail. Yeah. They brought that equipment in to set up the medical room in there. The other officers that are involved in the field, a lot of that was during operations where Vital was out working with us in the field. Those officers were already out working those type of things. They just documented it. Okay. So we can only look forward. We can only look forward yeah. now, and yeah. so I let's make sure we have with the contract. I'm okay. in favor of the contract. I just uh, was. So, Ajayan, are you are you seconding Mr. Najarian's yes. motion? Okay. Roll call, please. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. No, we have two cards. Oh. Yes, 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 indeed. Motion was by Councilmember Najarian. Second. Yes. Before we take a roll, uh, Anez Argarian. She left. She left. Mr. Mohin, Mike Mohin. Mayor, how long? Three minutes. Good evening, council members. My name is Mike Mohill. First, I apologize to Mrs. Yasmin Beers for saying her husband was a government employee. On another matter, it seems our police chief Castro is again violating the trust of our community. Why is Chief Castro asking for a no-bid contract for our police department medical services? Did you know Police Chief Castro is on the promotional video of Vital Medical Services? Did you know retired Police Chief John New from Torrance is one of the officers for Vital Medical Services? Did you know that former Chief John New was invited in 2016 by Chief Castro to sit on a Glendale Police a Captain Exam panel whose findings were disqualified because of improper communication between the Chief and retired chief new. Just for the record, in 2016, Councilman Agajanian, you were not on council when the Glendale Coalition for Better Government exposed the improper communication by Chief Castro. This information was also later reported in your Glendale Community Newsletter. Did you know that former District Attorney Steve Cooley is listed as Chief Executive Officer of Vital Medical Services? 
Vital Medical Service is nothing but a good old boys club with Glendo Police Chief Castro doing a video promotion and Steve Cooley, good name, is being used to win contracts. Why weren't Glendo Adventist, Glendo Memorial, Glendo uh, Verdugo Hills, urgent care facilities also asked to bid on this nearly $1 million contract? Councilman Sinanian, you have often asked our city manager, why don't we have more competitive bidding on large contracts and not from why only one source? Today, we know why we, now we can assume why there was no competitive bidding for this police department contract. Our police chief Castro is using his name, position, and our city's name in his promotional video. It seems Vital Medical Services was set up by police chiefs, retired district attorneys who have an inside track and connection to departments and city personnel that give them a competitive advantage. There's no need to accept this new contract as we have about eight months to find another vendor with impeccable credentials. I would suggest Police Chief Castro read government code number 18704, which states the following. A public official at any state or local government has a prohibited conflict of interest and may not make, participate in making or in any way use or attempt to use his or his official position to influence a government decision. If any council member votes for this item, you are sadly corrupt. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moore. <clears throat> so before you call for a vote, so why wasn't this a competitive, a com uh, competitive bidding process? Because uh, taking and, and working with our local hospitals is what we used to do. We have to take the arrestees to the hospital. So to the extent that we don't want to do that anymore because it takes officers out of the field, something that you would think Mr. Mohill would be appreciative in terms of stretching that value dollar, uh, we found a vendor to actually come into the jails and provide that service. And right now, for the full range of services that we need, we don't know, I certainly don't know of any other provider that will do that. Can you get a clinician to come out and draw blood? Sure, but everything else that goes along with the workplace safety uh, that the chief has described, no one else does that. Now, as I said at the beginning, in three years' time, could there be as this market develops? Yeah, probably. But here to four today, I would tell you that there, that animal doesn't exist, at least not to my knowledge. If you'd like to ask the folks from Vital Medical who are here, they can tell you what their market looks like today. So they're, they have like a monopoly position in this market right now? Only to the extent that they were the first ones to get where there was a niche based on uh, the, their knowledge of the market. Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, um, a professional service agreement is um, exempt from competitive bidding under the City Charter. Um, it's an RFP for those services, and, and issuance of an RFP is not required under all circumstances. Um, it can be selected if there's a sole source or a particular type of specialty professional service. So it is. And the case here is what? Sole source? What's it? This, it, well, it's not. Uh, it is a professional service as opposed to a uh, competitive okay. bid for labor under our... Um, but, okay, so that's like a formal answer. That's a formal answer. What's that's the correct. logical answer? I mean, that's the question because in light of sort of the stuff that Mr. Moyle is talking about, I, I think... No, I like the logical yeah, answer no, much more than I like the formal answer. That's the basis I, I of it. I to call the folks from medical and they will tell you about who else is in this space. And I think today... No one yet is in that space. Now, when you look at the amount of work that is being done around the county, in a few years' time, the replication is the greatest form of flattery. They will have competitors going forward. There's no two ways about that. I think that more and more entrance into that market, into that space, will, will occur. And that's why I think you're looking at this as a three-year contract, not a five-year, 10-year, 20-year contract that goes on forever, but rather something that's relatively short-term, because we know council does value bidding out those services, even if they're professional services. And if we were to do an RFP, 
the end, the res result would be that the only one entity would apply. I mean, that's I'm assuming that's what you're telling us, right? That's what I would tell you in terms of the full range of services, or you'd have somebody that has, doesn't have proof of concept that hasn't done it anywhere else that you would be saying, let <coughs> me take on the liability with someone that's never done it. Let me possibly put folks at risk that hasn't done it. I think you're well served to let that market mature before you go in and test that market. But would it cost us any money to do this RFP? It would cost you time and staff uh, to do it, and to the extent that you have your staff, certainly from the public safety uh, uh, departments, both police and fire, uh, because it's fire is also impacted, telling you that this is a, the, the right thing to do, this is our best recommendation. Certainly it's your policy choice to not go with that, but we can only make the recommendations to you. Ultimately, council has to make the policy choice. Right. I think the, doing the RFP most likely would result in what you said it would result in, but it would eliminate this cloud. Uh, over over its you know its head uh, because there would be no questions. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, I, well, what you know we what we could do I think is perhaps give them the eight months uh, instead of the eight months and two years, and then that would give time for an RFP and uh, uh, then we could revisit this. I'm, I'll vote for that. So that will be my motion. So is that a substitute is there, is, motion? I'm sorry, it's a substitute, substitute motion. So that yeah. is priority over the original motion. Wait, were you, did you want to second it? Cause, oh, okay. Or, or did I just second your motion? You did I, I seconded your substitute motion. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Any more discussions? No? Yeah, no. Uh, we had no, what we have on table. Okay. <laughs> so there's a substitute motion. To, to have the contract go just for the eight months, not to do an extension of it, and during that time, come back with some sort of RFP um, okay. Okay. for before, other, to see if we, anyone else is interested. Before we take a vote, I think Chief it would wants to It would be a price say. change if we're just doing it for eight sure. months. So I would need to have Lionel come up and maybe explain that, because we won't get the deal. The deal is for three years. Right. That's why we're getting the significant savings that makes it cheaper than going to a hospital. But why? What is what, what changes? Let me let me ask one of them oh. to come up and okay and explain the the process and the, the honorable mayor, business. members of the council, city manager, Mr. Cho, and uh, all staff here. Uh, as uh, one of the founders of Vital Medical Services, the the basis behind this program was a niche in a market that was initially uh, announced to us by a law enforcement agency, uh, not within the city of Glendale. Uh, as a, an emergency room manager for many many years, the issue came to light of. You know, we're coming into the ER with our arrestees. We're sitting there for two to three hours. They're fighting. They're screaming. You know, there's a potential for a risk management aspect there. So as many, many have mentioned in regards to a sole source, yes, we are a sole source uh, vendor that's out there, Mr. Sinanian. There's nobody that does compete with us currently. Currently, with the type uh, of facility that the Glendale Jail is, it's a type 1 jail. Uh, no medical is required whatsoever, hence allowing and saying if someone requires a medical clearance for pre-booking services through the L.A. County Sheriff's Department, they will ultimately have to go to a hospital or a medical center to have this clearance done. Uh, as a risk management uh, partner here, we are absolutely sole source, uh, and I like to not necessarily shed light on some of the incidences that have occurred recently with other cities, such as the city of L.A., but with a simple taser deployment and the 17-year-old who was tased in the city of L.A. back in 2015, uh, that resulted in a $3.5 million settlement because that person was transported to Harbor UCLA General down in the Torrance area, ultimately reached for the officer's gun there, and was shot in an ER. So the whole aspect, based upon that you, you know it, it was a justified shooting that occurred and that's something that we don't want to introduce into any of the communities that we serve all the arrestees are seen in a secure environment this is absolutely sole source nobody is out there that does this currently whatsoever and as you said mr sinani and i've watched many council meetings and had many discussions we welcome competition absolutely we welcome competition so when that time does come up and the time for rfp is out there but as sole source right now there is no competition that does what we do but that, and that's where we're at, and that's the whole basis in adjust to the service. Will you, will you explain the the cost difference? They'll, they'll be more expensive. In Absolutely, the I'll, I'll have uh, our managing partner Armin Vartania come up here, yeah. and uh, he'll speak to the uh, numbers aspect of that. Okay. Thank you, so. council members. Uh, for the record, uh, managing director, mm. but a small uh, technicality. So uh, we've lost our shirts on the Glendale contract. I know Alex doesn't like me to discuss it. 
but we've lost about 450 plus thousand dollars over this last term. This cuts the loss. I still lose on this contract. Why have you lost the... Uh... Why? Because we've got 24-7 staff that are, have to deploy like this. Imagine it like a fire department. I can't pay them by procedure necessarily. I can't pay them uh, whenever they show up and they come in. They have to be ready and be deployed to any of our cities. I can't ever call the chief and say, oh, sorry, we're not having someone come out. Mm -hmm. So we have to be able to have that base there. And Glendale is such a busy and, 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 uh, and has such a, a big volume that we constantly have someone in there, and, and oftentimes we have them sit there. We've worked uh, very closely with uh, the chief and the chief's office, and they've twisted our arms to the point where I'm losing every single month on this contract. If it does go to RFP, I'll go to market. And it, and it ends up costing a lot more. This is more of a partnership and more of us uh, wanting to work together. I live here, I live on Lexington. Our office is on Central. I go up and down Brand. I'm looking forward to the trolley. So this is, this is my city. So I want to make sure that Glendale is done right. But uh, as part of that comes with a consistency. Now I'm OK losing a little bit every month. As we build scale, hopefully that will close its gap. I don't ever expect to make any money on this company. I expect at least for it to break even and cover its costs. And that, that's, that's the general. So if it's an eight month period and it comes out to market and competitive bidding, then you know, I ha I'm going to have to move to something where at least my costs are covered and not where I'm in a constant uh, loss situation. If I can sell one last question. So you're, you're willing to lose money on the Glendale contract because you, you're hoping that you know, the Glendale contract leads, leads to other contracts? Absolutely. You know? OK, I understand. Absolutely. So you're building your business up. You know what? I'll, I'll, support, start right. I'll support that first motion, Mr. Nigerian's motion in that and, case. And you are the sole, the sole provider. Absolutely, I mean, absolutely. And, and candidly, I, I joke about this, but uh, at our profit margins, uh, I think we might be the sole provider for a while. And uh, nobody wants to do this. The, for one, one hospital administrator in the year, I built a hospital in the Glendale Jail, or Alex really built a hospital in the Glendale Jail, insured up to the same levels as hospitals, quick response times, and eager people that are happy to see inmates and suspects and, and help the police. And the police are in and out in 15 minutes okay. in a secure environment. I renew the motion. So okay. which one? Yes. The first one. Whatever we have, yours. I'm All okay right. with it. I just uh, wanted Mr. to know. So I, I think, so technically your, your speaking, motion. you would have to uh, withdraw okay. your motion. I'll withdraw my motion. Okay. Am I correct, yes. Madam Chair? And the second would have to be also to withdraw. I, I withdraw my second. I, I thought so I did. The only I motion was the first one. Uh, okay, I renew the motion to approve whatever we have. Staff is the, I'm sorry, the initial motion was made by Council Member Najarian, and the initial second was made by Council Member Agajanian. Right, so we're going back to that motion. Yes. That motion. Right. Roll call? Thank you. Roll call, please. <laughs> it is staff recommendation. Is staff recommendation. Staff recommendation. Okay. Council, Thank you. Me Council Member Agajanian. Yes. Divine. Yes. Najarian. Yes. Sananian. Yes. Mayor Garpedian. Yes. Thank you. Next item, please. Three is Fire Chief regarding a proposed agreement with UCLA Center for pre hospital care to provide professional emergency medical services nurse education to the fire department. Three A is motion authorizing to execute a professional services agreement with UCLA Center for pre hospital care. So, child? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry about that. Um, just very quickly, and I'll, I'll bring up uh, Chief, if you have, uh, Chief Fisher, if you have any questions. Um, as part of our EMS program, having a paramedic program in-house, uh, we do have to have a nurse educator. Until uh, several years ago, we were able to collaborate with, uh, I believe it was uh, uh, Adventist Hospital. Uh, they would have a nurse educator for us. They got out of that particular business. At this point, we're able to work with UCLA, as most agencies in, uh, in Los Angeles County do. Uh, and so through UCLA, we have the nurse educator that is here uh, before you for request. Effectively, a nurse educator does a lot of the continuing education, the quality control, and ensuring uh, that uh, everything that our folks are doing in the field is consistent with up-to-date
state guidelines. It's you know, the teaching the teacher. Um, it is making sure that our people are safe and that the care that they are administering is safe. Uh, so with that, I'll bring up Chief Fish, and if you have any specific questions for him, uh, certainly he can answer those. Good afternoon, Chief. Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, my pleasure to be here. Any questions for Chief? Oh, yes. Uh, so, John. Yes, I was reading here. Uh, so, you're using UCLA, but previously using Glendale Adventist Medical Center for the same services. That's correct, sir. So, did we try to reach them again? I know. It has been said here in 2013, I guess, 2012, they stopped providing these services. That's Did correct. Did they try to reach them back and see maybe they do it now because no, they, they are, are... Yeah, we, we, went back, we went back to them and they got out of the nurse educator business altogether. They did that as a favor to us in 1998 when we started providing advanced life support on our ambulances. And so uh, when it ended up happening was Judy Grimaldi was the nurse educator for a professional ambulance, and she came over to help us launch our paramedic program within the city of Glendale. She liked what she saw, and then she decided that it was no longer, she no longer wanted to be a nurse educator. And so when she got out, the, basically the favor that Glendale Adventist did for us was over with, and so we, we went outside to look for other, other uh, people that could provide us, other agencies that could provide us with a nurse educator, and that's where UCLA came in handy. UCLA is the, the gold standard right now as it relates to nurse educators in the county. Uh, most of your smaller departments use UCLA, uh, and they have five nurse educators, which is really handy because if one of the nurse educators is sick or injured or can't show up, we have uh, four other people in that person's place that can take the, the place of that nurse educator. So Glendale Venice effectively got out of the business of doing nurse educators, and that's why we don't, uh, we don't ask them to do it anymore. Okay. Any more questions? I'll move the item. Second. Thank you, Chief. Thank Roll call, please. Council members Agajanian? Yes. Devine? Yes. Najarian? Yes. Sananian? Yes. Mayor Barcadian? Yes. Next item, please. Forest Director of Community Development and Public Works regarding Glendale Burbank Regional Streetcar Feasibility Study, 4A's motion authorizing to execute a professional services agreement with HNTB Corporation. <laughs> Up. Yes, sir. And, and, uh, just there's a B to that resolution appropriating two hundred thousand dollars in grant monies from the Southern California Association of Governments. Mr. Mayor, if it would please the council, can we take just a five-minute uh, break so we can do a bit of research uh, that's important sure. to the council? Yeah, five Thank minutes, you. please. Okay, we are back from our short recess. Uh, what's next, please, Mr. Ochoa? Uh, yes, sir. Before, yeah, before Mr. Ochoa starts, on this next item, as much as I would love to participate in the uh, deliberations and the ultimate vote, because this, the concept, the project, the idea is very dear to my heart, I have to recuse myself because of a campaign contribution. So. Okay. Good luck. Thank you, Mr. Sinan. Okay. I will tell Mr. you, Ochoa, sir, that... You uh, I'm sorry? Happy Halloween. Yes, happy Halloween indeed. Uh, and I will tell you, the reason why I'm dressed so informally is our theme was Western, and so this is about as Western as I get. <laughs> uh, no truer words really were spoken than, than those uh, from uh, Councilman Sinanian. Uh, this is close to his heart. It's close to the mayor's heart, who worked very hard to get the grant from SCAG, very close to Mr. Najarian's heart, as this is something that fits when, uh, within the, the purview of uh, his transit background, certainly uh, from the alternate position on Eco Rapid, uh, Mr. Agajanian uh, has evinced a tremendous interest, and certainly from the uh, COG and SCAG realm, also uh, Councilwoman Devine has had a, a great desire to see this type of project come to fruition. So, uh, with all five of you channeling all your best energy here, we finally are. Uh, to hopefully select a uh, consultant that will move forward with the, uh, the project, uh, the, the uh, feasibility study for the much-anticipated, long-awaited 
streetcar for Glendale. Uh, with that, I will bring up our uh, transit planner, uh, Justin Robertson, uh, and he will take you through a brief presentation and also uh, introduce you to the team from HNTB, uh, who is the staff recommendation pursuant to the RFP process that was conducted. Okay. Justin. Thank you, Mr. Well, City Manager. Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, um, tonight we're asking you to authorize the City Manager to execute a professional services agreement for the uh, Glendale Burbank Regional Streetcar Feasibility Study. Uh, the last time we came to you with this item was, I believe, June 25th, and we went into pretty good detail at that time. Tonight's presentation will be a little truncated because you've heard a lot of the details relative to this study before. Uh, in addition to, uh, so that would be to uh, enter into a PSA with HNTB Corporation following a competitive RFP process. Uh, we'd also ask you to approve a resolution of appropriation so that we can accept the SCAG funds that are going to pay for roughly half of this study. So uh, this feasibility study is going to look at a broad range of topics related to what would it take to get a streetcar up and running in Glendale? What are the myriad considerations with regards to um, where should it run? What are some potential parking or traffic impacts, uh, utilities impacts? Uh, what could ridership look like? What would it cost to, to build, to maintain, to operate? Um, and how would we pay for it? What are our options with regards to funding sources, timing, what's the process related to those, and which are perhaps the best fit for the city? Um, as well as making sure that at more than one, uh, at multiple stages in the process, we're going back to you, HNTB is coming back to city staff, to the city council, to the people of Glendale, checking in and making sure that Glendalians and our associated stakeholders, SCAG, the city of Burbank, Metro, um, certainly um, Hollywood Burbank Airport, um, weighing in on the alternatives uh, that we ultimately narrow down into a locally preferred alternative, and then we study that in depth. Uh, as part of the RFP, we also solicited bids on not only the Glendale portion of the project, but a presumptive Burbank portion of the project, because as a initially envisioned, uh, the city of Glendale had seen this connecting Larry Zarian Transportation Center to Hollywood Burbank Airport somehow, and the purpose of this study was to help us figure out how best to do that. Uh, since then, the city of Burbank has uh, weighed in, and, and they've said, well, we might like to look at other uh, destinations for this, other routes that the city of Glendale might not have considered. And so as part of this, we broke up, we requested that the proposers tell us what would it cost to study the Glendale portion in depth, what would it cost to study a Burbank portion in depth, and in addition to those, so now the city of Burbank has something to consider. Um, in addition to those, we've asked them to provide um, bids on studying <coughs> personal rapid transit technology which is a bit of a hot topic that, uh, that uh, we heard from folks at SCAG as well as on the dais here that that was a topic of interest. So we did solicit bids on studying that technology as well. Uh, and of course, the uh, Burbank portion, as I'd mentioned. So the PRT is going to be part of this report that's coming back as so, part of this study? So right now, the contract that we're uh, proposing to negotiate with HNTB is for the Glendale study. But what, you ha uh, what we've been provided by HNTB as well as the other proposers is if this city council so chose, they could add on those to the contract. But right now the contract that we're considering does not currently include that alternative. That is in your hands if you so choose, if you give us that direction. Okay. Okay. Continue. So uh, as I mentioned, it was a competitive RFP process that a few weeks after we came to you with permission to do so, we, we advertised this project. We received five responsive proposals. We received six proposals in total, one of which um, proposed solely on the PRT study. And in asking for proposals for a streetcar feasibility study, 
proposing to only study PRT was considered non-responsive. However, we do now have that proposal, that one proposal, and we do know what they presume it would cost to do that work. So we, we have that information as well. Um, the rankings of the written proposals and then the oral presentations were done by a panel consisting of City of Glendale staff from Community Development and Public Works, as well as the City of Burbank, um, the project manager for the City of Los Angeles' streetcar project on Broadway, uh, and a representative from SCAG, who is our funder in part. Um, the RFP considered uh, 24 different areas that proposers were uh, told in advance they would be scored on. Um, cost was one of 24 considerations and um, certainly not, uh, there was no weighting, it was not the most important, it was not the least important, but it was one of the 24 uh, criteria in the RFP. Uh, at the end of the day, and what you can see in the staff report before you, there's a table there uh, uh, illustrating that HNTB, given all 24 areas on which they were, the proposers were scored, HNTB Cor Corporation scored highest overall. Pursuant to government code section 4526, um, the primary considerations for ultimately awarding these contract uh, public, uh, excuse me, professional services agreements is on the basis of competence and qualifications. And in total, we believe that the 24 criteria that we've used this and in the past for evaluating these sorts of proposals, that that is what those criteria get at. Uh, and finally, um, we did follow up on the references that they provided to us, and we remain confident that HNTB is a good, solid choice for the city of Glendale that can perform as proposed. Uh, HNTB Corporation, they're a rather large firm that has worked on many, many streetcar projects and urban light rail projects in the United States including most recently and most relevantly on the OC Streetcar in Santa Ana and, and uh, Garden Grove. There's a nice long list there of the, that's only their streetcar uh, experience up there in the United States. Uh, and members of the project team that they've proposed would be working on this for us have also worked on the LA Streetcar uh, and a number of others, some of which are running today, others are still in planning. Um, other local experience from this team is on the Doran Street grade separation project. Uh, HNTB was a major part of the planning and design portion of that project as well as uh, community outreach and the environmental process and I'm sure I'm leaving something out but um, Glendale knows these folks for that reason as well. Um, also on their team they have folks that have taken streetcars through the federal funding and the federal environmental process. Um, the feds are not the only game in town when we're looking for funding for this project, but uh, it may be too soon to say that we don't need federal funds. And so the consideration of what it takes today to set us up should this council choose to enter the federal funding process to build a streetcar, uh, we need to take that into account today. We need to be thinking about all of the ways in which we might fund this. And so it's important that um, some of the folks on this team have direct experience with those processes, including one member who actually worked for the uh, FTA uh, administrating the federal funding process. Uh, finally, the uh, HNTB Corporation, interestingly, their work on the OC streetcar lately has involved working directly with the California Public Utilities Commission on, um, on working through some of the regulatory issues, particularly relating to safety, on the OC streetcar. And streetcars, though they are, there are extant streetcars across the country, they're relatively new and rare in California. And so s some of the ways in which the state regulates them is um, still being worked out and HNTB has been at the table for that process trying to get the OC streetcar uh, ready for um, construction. So um, as we had uh, mentioned to you in June, we see this as a 12 month study. If you give uh, the city manager the go ahead on the PSA this evening, uh, within the next month we're going to um, 
get that PSA executed and have our kickoff meeting and we will hit the ground running. Um, we have f uh, four major workshops, these milestones you see in the, the project schedule here. Um, they are not all public workshops initially. The initial workshops are to help internally define the project and help figure out at the staff level, at the city council level, our, our sort of internal stakeholders, um, what is it exactly we're proposing to study so that then HNTB can go and do their homework. So as you can see, the initial tasks are about uh, determining existing conditions and doing data collection and figuring out um, how exactly we propose to engage the public moving forward. So the initial phases are all about laying the groundwork for then taking it to the public and having them weigh in perhaps at an open house or a workshop or a series of workshops. Uh, those are decisions that are going to be made very early on so then we can execute. Um, and uh, what else can I say? So some of the next steps generally, let's take a step back. Um, how do we get to a streetcar? It starts tonight with a feasibility study. Um, part of this feasibility study is going to, as I had mentioned, put together a funding plan. Um, it's going to do a broad survey of what are the funding options out there. Um, federal, state, uh, Measure M, uh, there's a lot of new options on the horizon that were not available to the city or to anyone back in 2005, the last time the city of Glendale uh, flirted with the idea of a streetcar feasibility study. So it's a rather different picture today on how projects, get, projects like this get funded. So as part of this study, we propose putting together, doing that study of how could we possibly fund this, how could we phase this, what would an initial segment, if we weren't going to build it all at once, what would that look like? So that's some of the work that's going to occur as part of this study. Um, that would, having this study enables us to implement that funding plan and move into the environmental process to design the project itself and then to really spend the big money on constructing and ultimately operating the project. Uh, these estimated costs at the bottom of the slide here, these are from the very, very rough conceptual estimates that uh, Alan Loomis had presented to, uh, to this body last year, I want to say. And this assumes, now this range, it's a broad range because it's, it's, that's dependent on a lot of things including what sort of, uh, what sort of streetcar equipment do you run? Where specifically will it go? Uh, will some routes be more challenging than others? So we provide a range here, and again, this is a very broad estimate. This assumes 9.7 miles, which is from Larry Zarian, uh, Brand Boulevard, out Glen Oaks, all the way to the airport. Now again, this could be phased. This could only operate in a limited version of some of the concepts we've talked about in public. And so these costs may not speak to what it would actually cost. It could be more, it could be less, but for the purposes of discussion. Um, this assumption, the 9.7 miles, also includes a spur up to Mountain along Brand, which was a topic of discussion from this body back in June. It was mentioned, uh, the question was asked, there was a conceptual line on a map, and, and um, one of the members of this body said, well, why not take it up to Mountain? Uh, that's included in this assumption here, as well as the three miles into, uh, through Burbank to the airport. So, again, to wrap up tonight, we're asking you to authorize Mr. Ochoa to execute a professional services agreement with HNTB Corporation, and we're asking you to appropriate $200,000 from our friends at SCAG. Any questions? Yes. Sorry, John. Okay. Uh, I did not see on your uh, presentation uh, <coughs> in the report on page four, which I have, not the presentation you have done. Page on four. Page four uh, about ratings, criteria, and the scoring. Yes, sir. Can you explain to me what uh, you guys have done with Oral interview. What's oral interview? So if you go just above that table, you'll see there's a, a long list of bullet points there. And what we've done there is we broke out 
what those um, 24 different criteria were that the raters were, were using to consider these proposals. And so the first half of that list is, here are all the things on the rating sheet when you're reading the written proposal, and then the second half of that is, here are the considerations when you're there in the room with the proposal, pro pro proposers delivering their presentations to you. And so oral interview, uh, they were rated on presentation, organization, clarity, communication skills, technical understanding, and responses to questions. And one of the benefits of doing the oral interviews is actually more often than not, the proposer, the, the team that is speaking to you and telling you what they intend to do on your project, that's who's most likely going to be doing the work. And so it's an opportunity to get a feel for them and consider uh, how do they present themselves and when this team is in front of the public, perhaps at a workshop or before this body in a city council meeting, um, how are they going to, how will they com comport themselves in public? And, you know, is there some, some level of uh, how do we see them representing the city? How do we see them representing this project? Um, and uh, professionalism. And, you know, of course, standing up here before you today, or your work there on the dais, that's obviously a consideration, and uh, you want to put your best foot forward. Okay, but uh, how many people you guys interview, let's say? We interviewed five teams. Or is oh, each of the teams, I would say, roughly brought five people apiece, and it was not all at once. We spaced it out through the course of a day, and so we would let a proposer know, we'll no, see you at 9 o'clock. one company. From just one company? How I would say people? five people at a time From or six people company. at a time. Yes, sir. Okay. And they might take different, uh, different portions of the presentation depending on their area of expertise. So, for example, when talking about some of the engineering considerations, uh, they might have their, their engineering lead do that portion of the presentation, for example. They might have it led by the project manager or the project lead, and then they kick it off to other members of the team and... And uh, that's typically how they go. So the reason I'm asking this question is because HNTB, the score is 1,057. Right next one, AE, AECON, or AECOM, yes. is 1,000. If yes, you sir. just uh, oral interview brought HNTB on top of the other company, uh, just the difference. Uh, the oral company difference is 58 points. So if you level them the same, if you would score them the same, AE come, would come on top. I mean, all of a sudden, this uh, oral interview put one person on top than the other. I mean, just I, one item. I, I understand what you're David. saying. No, well, that's, that's an important part. I mean, I think as you look at their scores side by side, you're, you're right, they're very close in many respects, but the, the presentation that they make, as Justin points out, that is generally how you can expect folks, at least in our professional experience, how you can expect them to perform um, when they are out in public. Not to say the AECOM folks weren't good, they just weren't as good as the folks that we're recommending to you. And you, when you look at the other scores, 300 to 314, 288 to 281, 63 to 71, 62 to 48, I mean, they are very, very close. And, and it does get to a point where um, you, you want to, in order to guard against subjectivity, you want to have that bank of people that Justin described who are the evaluators. So it isn't just him making the recommendation or it isn't just me re making the recommendation. This is a whole scope of people that work in this field um, and have many, many years combined looking at these different players and probably have worked with these players on other projects. So certainly the, the oral interview is an important consideration in evaluating these teams. Anybody can put together a great proposal on paper, but you know, the extension of that is I can write a great staff report, but can I come up here and, and convince you that what I've written in that staff report is true and meaningful and helpful to you? And to what degree does my professionalism and my presentation to you help get that across? It's, it's part of the consideration. Okay. All right. So, Jan? Um, thank you. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I, yes, thank you for the presentation. I know um, 
through Metro, I know the folks at HNTV, AECOM, uh, Nelson Nygaard. I don't know the PlaceWorks or the Steer Davies Gleave Group. Um, I mean, they're, they're preeminent. Uh, HNTB and AECOM are preeminent uh, engineering firms and planning, transportation planning firms. Nelson Nygaard uh, did our own uh, Glendale uh, mobility study. Contrary to the assertions by some of the uh, ignorant members of the public that we did that maybe about 10 years ago, uh, if I'm not mistaken, maybe 11 years ago, not back in the 1990s. 2006, I believe. There we go. I was right on. Um, uh, also, Pat, I know Pat and um, your cohort is Tanya, who, who has been helping us with the Doran uh, overpass and uh, grade separation project. So I think they're very familiar. These are the guys who face the Pelanconi Park uh, people in those sometimes um, robust meetings uh, that they have. So I'm I'm very comfortable with HNTB. I, you know I don't I don't know about the the, the minutia of the scoring, but suffice to say that I'm sure it was a fair process. And if HNTB uh, came out on top, I think that's great. They're very qualified. Um, just a couple of questions as to how deep this planning effort is going to go. I know um, speaking to my uh, my colleague. Uh, several months ago, before this issue even came up, uh, Mr. Sinanian was describing in China certain wireless capacitor programs with the electri electrification mm -hmm. of these. Are, is, this, uh, is this something possible, and is this in the scope of the analysis, the technology that's going to be proposed? It absolutely is. So part of the decision-making process that we all as stakeholders will go through in, in getting to a locally preferred alternative. The work that you, the city council, your considerations uh, have to include um, what are the technologies? That has everything to do with what's the quality of service going to be like, where can we run it, and what's it going to cost? And so, yes, off-wire technologies, which the last time this council talked about a feasibility study in 2005, were I, I don't believe there were any examples of that in the United States. Uh, today, there, there are quite a few examples of that um, in service uh, outside the U.S. and within. Um, so these emerging technologies are definitely part of the consideration, particularly their, with regards to their ripeness. Um, one question is, just because something is cutting edge, does that make it, do we want to be the first? Do we want to be the second uh, to give it a shot? And all of those are sort of part of the technology portion of this feasibility study. And ultimately, again, the, the goal of this study is to, after 12 months, bring back to you, the, the decision makers on behalf of the city, uh, the best information you could possibly have to make an informed decision is this right for us? Do we want to proceed down this road? And even though you may have been part of that process every step of the way, at the end of the day, you're going to want it all as one comprehensive report that you can chew on, and that's what we're after here. And as, um, as we go forward, the technology uh, for these are moving quickly. I know the Metro is thinking of some type of similar electrification of the gold line with the inductive charging, but it's, it's uh, rapidly uh, developing. So. Uh, let's let's keep our minds open in that regard. And and in that vein, I know that the PRT, the Hyperloop, uh, isn't quite there yet. But in the next few months, if that becomes more of a reality, I, I'm not. I don't want to spend a lot of time on the the PRT component because I don't think it's there yet. However, you know, leave a chapter in the in the um, the, the report that we're going to get on that. And of course, if it develops at a faster rate. I know Elon Musk is talking about different type of things and there's two competing Hyperloop companies. Keep that, um, keep us abreast of that because we may want to, as a council, ask a little greater focus on these new technologies that may change some of the issues that we're discussing like ridership or stations, um, right of ways and, and things like that. Lastly, I think the key part of this, I know we've got brilliant engineers all over. Um, Mr. Ekajanian is uh, standing up straight. Uh, 
so I'm, there's no doubt in my mind that we can design a streetcar project that's going to be successful. However, I think the key hurdle is going to be the financing component of this. So I know that that's part of the, uh, the model you talked about, federal funds, state funds. Let's, you know, Metro has some money. Let's uh, focus on that almost as much as the technical details because, the, you know, one without the other doesn't work. You really need both in hand. And certainly if you've got that uh, pot of money available, um, it's a good thing and certainly makes a project much more uh, feasible to become a reality. So um, recall that in summer of 2016, when the Community Development Department was briefing the City Council on a series of workshops on the South Glendale Community Plan, the transit picture in Glendale was part of that discussion, and streetcar was part of that discussion. And that was, I believe, July and August of 2016. Then comes, in November of 2016, Measure M, and shortly thereafter, this funding opportunity from SCAG. And that was the, the thought process was, wouldn't it be nice if we could study this, and then wouldn't it be nice if we could fund it? And both of those opportunities sort of presented themselves. How we theoretically could fund this, here's Measure M suddenly, a new funding source for projects of all sorts, uh, as well as this SCAG funding opportunity to right. do the study. And I mean, we're, we're, we have earmarked a couple hundred million dollars for the uh, BRT, the, the Burbank, Glendale, Pasadena BRT. Um, would I swap that money out for the streetcar in Glendale? Maybe I would. Um, but I'm just saying there's, there's pots of money out there that um, sometimes appear quickly. Uh, and the good thing is that having this project uh, in concept and already engineered, well, of course, this isn't the preliminary engineering, but as a concept presented gives our opportunity to grab those additional pots of money that much better when they do uh, appear. So, I think that's right. right. We want to have a plan in place. Right. We want to be ready. So thank you very much. Very, very briefly, I just, uh, I, I do want to say that the direction seems to be the electrification of, uh, of uh, cities, and uh, um, and I'm happy to hear that you're you're going in that direction. That you, I, I first of all, I want to thank you for a very, very uh, comprehensive report and very well done. I think this is the first time you've appeared before us. Yes, ma'am. Yes, well, well done. Well done, and it sounds like the study uh, is is pretty all inclusive, and and that is also um, a strength. So, um, thank you. That's good. So, okay, a um, couple of quick questions. The 9.7 miles is that all the way to Burbank, like yes. 10 miles, and the price that we have 97 million to 243 million per you know for the whole thing or. 10 million to 25 million per mile. Mm -hmm. Is it for both ways? Like when you go up to up on Brown and North, coming back south, is it the when you say per mile, is it for both both sides? Traffic. Both traffic. Double is it double traffic? So I believe that that figure is simply a straight line on a map, multiplied by the cost assumptions of constructing a streetcar per mile. Uh, research done, I believe, um, summer 2016, the best available estimates at that time, which are national figures. Part of the consideration here, part of why this study is important, is it's going to do a local relevant Glendale specific cost estimate for this project that we did not, we don't have, that we did, we don't have as a benefit of that research that was taken mostly from national sources. There's uh, research out there, there's examples of other streetcars in other places, but how much does it cost to build things in Los Angeles, in the Los Angeles no, area, is, a, is what, rather what, different. What, what I'm asking is, this is for two-way traffic. I mean, the cost that we have here, is it for two-way traffic? Because if you go up north on brand, you have to come back down, right? So is it for two-way traffic, or is it just what, what you see at the yeah, at the 97, it's a good question. Um, I, that's going to be on the low end. It, that will economize on on one track that will split to two to allow for passage at certain locations and then come back to the one track to oh. the extent that you're going a to siding. There'll be a siding. Siding is the term. Uh, to the extent that you go to multiple track uh, and and an extensive uh, an extensive uh, uh, route, 
then it'll start to creep up. The important factor will also be, and we talked about this last time, are we uh, uh, having to assemble right-of-way? A lot of folks will say, well, we have the old red car right-of-way. Modern technology being what it is, we might not want to site the streetcar in that right-of-way. Maybe it's in existing street right-of-way or other right-of-ways. So that also will have a tremendous impact on the fungibility of, of that cost. And also, speaking of the supercapacitors, you know, the, the superchargers, I, when I was in China last couple of weeks ago, I visited a couple of these factories, and uh, what they were saying was, in the morning, they can charge the batteries for three minutes and it go for 20 miles. This was for buses. I mean, for the, for the streetcars are a little different. And uh, every station that they wanted between the stations, they could have uh, a supercharger that would take 25 seconds to charge the batteries to get you to the next station. So, and there were new rails, new, new, new cars or streetcars that they were on one rail only. It didn't have two tracks. It was only one track. So it was very interesting to see those things. But we, I'm looking forward to this to this project to move forward and get the reports back sooner than 12 months because we want to build this thing in our lifetime. And uh, of course, funding is very important. And we're looking up to Mr. Najarian to swap that money for him. We'll get more money too. Um, yeah, that's something you know, we should talk about right. maybe. I, I don't want to I scare mean, Metro and say we don't want no, the BRT anymore. No, no, but we want the we BRT, but we it. want some of the funding to, to fund this project as well so we can move it forward. But, Going to BRT, speaking of PRT, I know the technology is not, may, may not be there, but how, how do we make that part of this process? I mean, is there a, is, is there a cost, cost, is there a cost involved that is not? There is a cost. My understanding was we, we wanted that option built into this. Uh, so as an ad alternate, yes. You, you will have the ability, I think maybe it's just terminology. Um, so as an ad alternate, as we move further into this process, if the city council says, you know what, we do want that PRT. We want you to look at it. HNTB is giving us a price to say, then this is what it costs to do it. But if we, if the council decided, now we don't want that ad alternate, we're just going to go with the straight streetcar, then we wouldn't want to pay for that. Same right. thing if Burbank yeah. decided to bail out. I understand. So do we have a, a bid from them already? We or do. We do. Okay. All right. So we'll discuss this later. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any, any more questions on this item? Motion? I'll move the item. Second. Roll call, please. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Council Member Zagajanian? Yes. Devine? Yes. Najarian? Yes. Sinanian? Mayor Garpedian? Yes. What's next, please? The only other item is a motion to adjourn and a second. Do we, have, we don't have a con council comments? Uh, not for the special meeting? Not for the special meeting. So we are moved to adjourn. Second. Okay. Roll call, please. That's it. No, roll call. No, no roll call. Okay. We go. Now we're going to reconvene.